Servus Männer, it's Red Bull Germany again. Today I want to talk about a topic that I wanted to talk about for a long time actually, but current events are making this topic even more relevant and interesting, I think. Let's just say I wouldn't be surprised if a certain pathogen had leaked out of a certain biolab in China because staff didn't handle the material carefully enough and they were outright criminally negligent in handling this material. This is a topic that I have a lot of personal first-hand experience with and it is how Chinese people or more specifically Chinese technicians, researchers and engineers are dealing with health and safety protocol. So whenever you are dealing with harmful substances such as biological cells, tissues or some chemical solvents, heavy metals, etc. But also if you operate equipment, uh, there can be electric danger and also optical danger from lamps or lasers. And of course, there are strict and very clear safety regulations for operating these materials and this equipment. Now, it is not only my impression, many, many colleagues share this opinion or they made the same experiences. And what I have seen in my time as a research scientist, but also as an engineer in the industry is very, very clear. There is a very clear pattern that can be observed that Chinese professionals handle this with extreme negligence. Now, my personal experiences is from almost two decades I had many, many Chinese colleagues on three continents in many countries, in national labs, university labs, research labs. And also now, if you follow my channel, you know that professionally in the industry, I also have some ties to China now, where I experienced management, engineers and also technicians deal with these questions. This is of course still anecdotal, but it is not one anecdote, it is a cluster of observations and anecdotes. And the observations were very clear, significant and almost unchanged over a long stretch of time over many, many continents in many different fields. So I want to give you some examples that are experiences, stories that I actually have witnessed firsthand. And also I want to remind you that this is the tip of the iceberg. I do not tell you the actually serious stuff because I would probably get in trouble over that. And because these more easy and uh, simple stories make it uh, much more clear, I think, and they encapsulate just as well what I'm trying to say here. Let me start right away with an example. There was a Chinese PhD student who was working in Germany with um, several chemicals in the lab. Among them were heavy metals, but also some interesting solvents. He was wearing his protective gear, of course. He had goggles and a mask and a lab coat and also gloves. The problem was then when he wanted to get some coffee that he just went out of the door of his lab, across the hallway, into the cafeteria and then he got coffee from a vending machine. The problem was that he was still wearing his lab coat and his gloves and he touched all the doors and actually the buttons on the vending machine. When we asked him if he thinks that this is okay, he just said it's not a problem. When his gloves were clearly full with the chemicals that he had just worked with. This is of course a harsh violation of lab protocol and should have actually resulted in him being removed from the lab and him losing his job immediately. Or at least if he does something like that again, which, let me tell you, he did. Of course, the research institution did do no such thing because they didn't want to get bad press. In the US, I experienced how Chinese PhD students as well as postdocs refused to use a fume hood when working with really, really nasty organic solvents. This in a confined area with no ventilation is a really, really big hazard to everybody in this room. Then in Germany, there was another incident where one of the Chinese researchers adamantly refused to label vessels with chemicals. That is, of course, a big no-no because you don't know what it is and then you also don't know how to dispose of this stuff again after the experiment is done or after that guy actually left the university. 
he was reprimanded and the only thing he did was not leaving these things out in the open, but he all put them in his locker. They were all still unlabeled, these vessels and these uh, flasks. And of course, other people had the task then to dispose of these chemicals and they didn't know what it was. And this is a highly, highly dangerous situation. So instead of just labeling his bottles, he just stored them in his locker and somebody else has to take care of the problem afterwards. So have I never seen other people do that? Of course I have seen other people do that as well. But let me tell you, I have never seen a group of people that consistently breaks lab protocol like mainland Chinese researchers. I have worked together with hundreds of them over the years and I have never met a single one that I would describe as a person who takes health and security but also the protection of coworkers and the environment serious in any form. So a single incident of these um, kinds of stories doesn't really say much But when you observe that group over a long time and you see that pattern clearly and significantly being reproduced everywhere and all the time, that maybe cannot be overlooked anymore. There must be a systematic underlying cause or at least an observable difference between them and other groups. In some of the cases, I actually know their personal motivation for this behavior. In one case, the guy said that it costs too much to always um, wear the safety equipment and to always um, change um, the gloves and all that stuff. In another case, one of the guys uh, just wanted to save time to get his experiments done faster so he can publish sooner. As some of you might know, Chinese people are highly competitive and they use every chance they can get to um, get an advantage. And it was consistently my experience that almost all of them sacrificed health and security considerations in order to speed up their lab work. Remember that most of the people who come to the West as researchers or students are really from the middle class or the upper class or upper middle class, let's say, in China. That means their parents are relatively higher ups in the Communist Party and uh, they are probably very rich. That is at least one group of them. And uh, of course, you also have uh, people from poorer backgrounds, from rural areas in China. My personal experience was that uh, these more rural Chinese people that come here as students and researchers, they are not as competitive, at least, well, they, they want to do the best work that they can, but they are not uh, trying um, any foul play in order to get ahead. They struck me as a little bit clumsy and careless. So they probably did that stuff rather because they were annoyed or ignorant and not because they wanted to save time or actually do stuff that you're not supposed to do in the first place to get publishable results. And in the industry, I have seen, of course, very, very grave cases that would be violations in Germany and probably everywhere else where I have worked. But I don't really know what the situation is in mainland China, how the legal uh, background is here. Sure, they have briefings about these things, but I can't really tell if this is a legal requirement or if it's just a polite suggestion. So I have seen people welding without any protective equipment, of course, without ventilation in close and confined areas. Then they were working at really substantial heights as far up as five meters above the ground without any harness or anything like that. And during the short duration of my stay, I even witnessed some very gruesome accidents that didn't have any consequences for management. I don't even know if they paid for the medication or the hospital care of the injured worker or if he gets any kind of benefits or any kind of pension when he's no longer uh, able to work. All I have seen is that they replaced the worker and they continued to work as if nothing had happened. This seems to be the Chinese system. So you can imagine, for example, that we did not really like to share a lab with Chinese people For exactly that reason, their working methods became a hazard to everybody in the whole department. 
And also in the industry, you always have to double check where they are and what they are doing if you do not want to have a workplace accident. Because they might just be playing with some buttons while you have your head inside of a machine. Or they are welding 4 meters above your head and you don't even notice it when you're busy dealing with something else. So these are my two cents. This is my cluster of anecdotes, my lived experience on this topic, so to speak. And let me remind you, this is not just my personal opinion. My colleagues that I've had over the years, they think about this exactly the same way. They observe the exact same stuff. And of course, while other people do these things too, it cannot be denied that there is a special quality to the negligence when dealing with dangerous materials or machines on the side of mainland Chinese technicians or researchers. Maybe this would stop if management didn't choose to ignore these things or if management and administration here in the West would start enforcing our rules also for Chinese researchers, which in my experience was not always the case. They didn't say it out loud, but I'm pretty sure they were thinking, ah, what can you do, these foreigners? They are just like this. So, as I said, I wouldn't be surprised if the global crisis that we see at the moment was actually caused by a research scientist in that biolab in China not paying attention, ignoring security protocol and leaking a deadly pathogen to the outside world from where the Chinese government helped to spread it all around the world. This is just a hypothesis at the moment. I just wanted to say I wouldn't be surprised. Big shout out to all my subscribers and supporters. Like, share and subscribe. If you like my material and you want to see more of that, please consider making a donation via PayPal or supporting me via Patreon or Subscribestar. Stay safe wherever you are. Don't panic. And as always, Servus Kameraden.